Luby's guest live. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Hello, everybody. <laughs> We're live. <laughs> okay. um, how do you know if there's anyone watching? So the influencer usually they wait a bit and they do something else. So every, every, everybody is coming in. Yeah, people Hello, will join. Hello, people. Yeah. Hi, Ansa. <laughs> Hi, Melanie. Hi, Bill Dog. <laughs> Hi, Hi, Jenny. <laughs> Hey Hi, Julie! Hi, <laughs> Sophie! Hi, everyone! Hi, Sarah! Hi, Charlie! Bonjour! <laughs> Mimi! Ollie! Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Um, we're just going to wait a minute or so to let more people join the chat before we uh, introduce our live um this afternoon so hello hey mill dog again <laughs> hey maxime <laughs> um should we start H how do you know when there's enough people hi everybody welcome okay we we're, we're we're going to start um, so I'm going to introduce uh, this session and uh, let you know the reason that we decided to have uh, a live question and answer uh, time on Instagram. Um, my name is Lucy. Did you? Uh, this is I'm Caroline. Uh, Caroline. Hi, it's me, Coco. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm Fanny. Bonjour. <laughs> Uh, so we make up uh, Morocco Animal Aid, or part of it, and uh, Caroline is a, a vet visiting from the Netherlands. And we decided to host this live because of Nina, who is the dog we posted about today and also uh, last week, who we thought uh, presented symptoms of rabies. Uh, and so after advice from the authorities, we isolated her um, to wait until she passed away so that she could be tested uh, to check. Um, so as well, we just wanted to say that this is our first live session and uh, uh, we're not so tech savvy. Um, so <laughs> bear with us. Um, we're just going to go with the flow. We're going to try and answer your questions as they come up on the screen. And uh, Caroline has prepared questions, sorry, answers to questions that you guys submitted already um, in the, the past week or so. Um, what else can cool. I say? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we, uh, we will really, I will answer questions, but we will, uh, we'll, uh, I'm sure new questions will come along. So also just please uh, type your questions in the chat when you uh, wonder something about rabies and uh, we will really do it together. So um, yeah, we'll see. And we uh, try to keep it in an hour. Yeah, so, uh, we'll, we'll try to make it as does. quick as possible. Um, but so you know from where we stand to at uh, Morocco Animal Aid, we, we are not vets um, and uh, we, don't want to, we don't want to pretend that we're experts. Um, another reason for this session was because we have questions as well. And uh, when, when we think we have a dog with rabies, there is, no, there is not necessarily a straightforward answer to every question that we have. So... At the end of the day, we, we act uh, on our belief that we are doing the best for the animal that we have in our care and also the community, which is... Ah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <good. laughs> number one. Dogs. <laughs> um. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm blushing. <laughs> Anyway, so yeah, we just wanted to make that clear that we don't always know what we're doing. Um, as much as we can, as often as we can, we reach out to a professional, uh, an expert, uh, we look online um, and it, it doesn't always, um, people don't always agree with it and uh, it, it, it hurts us to lose followers and support. But uh, our interests are in protecting the animals and protecting our community, and, and that is all. Over to you. Yeah, cool. <laughs> so um, I'm Caroline. I'm a vet. I studied veterinary medicine at Utrecht University in the Netherlands. 
um, and graduated in 2017. Uh, and I'm specialized mainly in public health and uh, tropical animal health and livestock. Uh, and I have a special interest in One Health, which is about uh, an integrated approach to uh, the health of animals, humans and the environment. So rabies really falls in that. Um, and I uh, studied epidemiology as well. And uh, currently I'm in research and I focus on so-called uh, neglected epidemiology. So it's, it's um, about the, the, how diseases transmit. Okay. So uh, infectious okay. diseases, how they go from, um, so, so I focus mainly on diseases that go from animals to humans, mm -hmm. um, such as rabies and, and how they spread them and where you see them okay. in the world, but also in areas in, in which animals they occur and which people they occur. Okay, so, amazing. So uh, basically that. Yeah, okay. Yeah, and I, um, in my research I focus on so-called neglected tropical diseases and uh, rabies is one of them and they're diseases, they're infectious diseases and they're common in um, mostly developing countries, mostly poorer communities, um, which you also see with uh, rabies. Mm -hmm. Why is it categorized as a neglected tropical so disease? It's, um, it's um, called neglected tropical diseases often not because the diseases itself are neglected but because the, the areas where they're common are neglected. Mm -hmm. um, so also what you see with rabies, there is um, often not a lot of awareness about rabies. Um, the people that get rabies mm -hmm. and also the animals that get rabies, uh, they uh, are not always in the care that they need. Mm -hmm. And uh, so some years ago, um, in collaboration with the World Health Organization, the big, uh, like WHO, the big health organization, uh, they decided to group these diseases and together with a lot of other organizations fight them. Mm -hmm. um, and for rabies, the, the target is that in 10 years time, in 2030, rabies will be eliminated. Okay. So uh, now the idea is to really combine efforts and uh, mm -hmm. join the fight against rabies. So that's, I think, why it's so important that mm -hmm. you um, yeah, want to join that as, as well. And yeah. And uh, I don't know if you've covered this in uh, other questions that have been asked, but is there, uh, um, are there places that have already won the fight? against rabies yeah so um i will talk about that maybe first we can um talk a little bit about what is rabies and, and how mm. it's transmitted for the people that are new to that and then we uh, can go into that okay. <laughs> uh, so, so i will tell a little bit about the disease and uh yeah please fill in uh, if you have more to say also a okay. bit about the situation here mm -hmm. so rabies is a virus and it's um, common in dogs but it's common in a lot of mammals so cats can have it as well um, and dogs and cats can transmit it to humans, but also to cattle. So goats can have it, sheep, donkeys, um, donkeys horses. horses as well, okay. uh, camels, basically all mammals. Okay. Um, that's something uh, I think some people don't know. And in Asia and Africa, where you have a lot of stray animals, um, it's, it's most common in, in, in dogs mm -hmm. and uh, to a lesser extent in cats. Okay. And is there a reason why dogs... Uh, most commonly the host of this virus? Yeah, so it's mainly about transmission. And mm -hmm. um, in, for example, in Europe, we um, had it in, in wildlife and, and uh, in the US as well. Mm -hmm. um, and then from wildlife, it, for example, when a, a bat bites a dog, it could go to dogs. Okay. But in transmission, it's so, so if you have a, a dog with rabies, the first one it would bite is most likely a dog because there are other dogs nearby. So if you have okay. like free roaming dogs, mm -hmm. then um, it, it, it kind of keeps uh, the transmission keeps on going in in stray dogs in the population. Okay. And it can then uh, also be transmitted to humans. Actually, in 95% uh, of the cases uh, where humans have rabies, it's uh, transmitted by dog bites, sometimes also by cat bites. Um, and um, especially in Africa and Asia, that's the case. You have, you have some cases uh, where it's transmitted from wildlife, but of course humans and wildlife are often farther apart from each other. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and, and dogs and people uh, live close together. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. So, um, uh, I had one question as well. Um, is rabies always transmitted or does it uh, occur naturally? So it is always transmitted by another animal. Um, if it occurs in dogs, it's, it's mostly um, dogs acquired it from another dog. 
Um, but it can take two weeks up to four months before a dog gets symptoms. So sometimes you don't know where the source of infection is. You don't know where the, bit the, the dog is that had rabies before. So sometimes it might seem that it kind of occurs naturally, but it actually uh, it was transmitted maybe a while ago. And uh, what is the breadth of um, incubation time? Yeah, so it's up to four months. It can be quite long. Okay. Yeah. And in, in all animals, is it four months? It's the virus that is incubated for four months. It doesn't matter on the host. Yeah, so I don't know actually if there's a big difference between animals. Um, mm -hmm. This is the case for dogs. But I think it, it, in many animals, it, it can be two weeks. It can be rather short, but it can also be quite long before symptoms display. And for humans? For humans, I think it's similar, yeah. And also, like, once symptoms display, it's also how it progresses is different. So sometimes from one day to the other, you see it, like, it progresses really rapidly. And sometimes also maybe what you've seen in dogs, it can be slower, it can be less obvious in a way. Okay. One of the uh, guidelines that we were given for isolation when we have an animal that is suspected of rabies is, uh, is to wait 10 days. Is that... Um is that a truism that the from the beginning of the symptoms to the end it's 10 days the 10 day window so that's often what you see indeed and that's why it's advised if uh, in some countries that if you have a dog that is suspected to have rabies that you isolate it for 10 days and observe how do the symptoms develop does it really look like rabies or can maybe be something else and then when it is rabies it's um, so it's a fatal disease all the dogs and also humans that like once they display symptoms they will die of it. Uh, it's one of the most uh, fatal infectious diseases, actually. Okay. So um, in, in dogs, when you wait 10 days and they die, there is a suspicion that it can be rabies. Mm -hmm. If not, then it's not. Yeah. So that's why uh, that's the law. And then I think so, so uh, there, there are quite some countries that have this legislation. Mm -hmm. um, but then it's, of course, also important to um, yeah, look at the situation and make sure animal welfare is okay. and. Uh, ideally discuss with the vet and authorities um, yeah, what to best, uh, how to best go about it. Okay, okay, great. So uh, somebody asked as well, can uh, rabies be passed on from, from person to, to, from human to human? Well, technically it's possible, but it almost never happened. So there has been like one or two cases where it was uh, transmitted to organ transplantations. But um, in ninety five percent of cases uh, of human rabies, they got it from a dog bite, and uh, um, it's because the it's transmitted through saliva, um, not blood. Yeah, so it's transmitted through saliva, mm -hmm. um, so it's mostly through biting. It can also be through licking of wounds or through scratches mm -hmm. that uh, get in touch with saliva. But it's mostly through biting, and then when you would be bitten, uh, saliva. Um, enters an open wound and then travels through the nerves to your central system and through the brain. That's also in um, in dogs and also in other species. You see um, often that dogs are like uh, disoriented. Uh, they can be paralyzed to some extent. They can uh, show different behavior than they normally do. Sometimes they're aggressive, um, often for no reason, or they can, for example, be aggressive, like bite, um, eat strange objects or bite towards fences or other, everything that is in their area, yeah. basically. But it's not always the case. Yeah. So you have um, two forms of rabies, uh, furious rabies and dumb rabies. Uh, we talked about it before also with the cases you've seen, so maybe mm -hmm. you can tell about that a bit. But in the, um, so, so I think most people, when they think about rabies, they think about furious rabies. So really these aggressive dogs that like bite and are aggressive towards everything and, and hang in the fences and all these things. But it's not always the case. So it can also be a dog that is disoriented, paralyzed, uh, salivating, uh, sometimes they have an open jaw. Um, what is characteristic is that if you uh, offer them water, a lot of times they try, but they cannot swallow it. Mm -hmm. So this is uh, another thing I think is important to clarify that the hydrophobia, mm -hmm. which is the fear of water, is not exactly that an animal will be frightened and yeah. pull away from water. It's that they, um, they, they can't drink. Exactly. Yeah. Sometimes they try, they put their snouts in, yeah. but um, because of paralysis at the throat, they cannot mm -hmm. swallow it. Yeah, I think there is a, a common... Um, 
uh, I'm not sure what the word is, a folklore or rumour that if you throw water on a rabid dog, Mm -hmm. it will kill them. And this is perhaps attached to um, hydrophobia, but there there is no... Link. There is no link, right? This is not true. Not as far as I'm aware of. This is um, how we... uh learned that hydrophobia is displayed and I've seen it in South Africa in dogs is that they try to drink but they 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 are not able to do so yeah yeah Uh, we've we've seen uh, what looked like both furious and dumb rabies Mm -hmm. and and the dumb rabies we've uh, seen dogs uh, really dip their noses and snouts into a a bowl of water but um, not be able to use any of their their facial muscles or their tongue they couldn't drink but uh, they certainly weren't afraid of it they um they just weren't able to use their tongue or their mouth yeah um i have a question Mm -hmm. (laughs) um with the the virus how it transmits if um if a dog with furious rabies bites another dog Mm -hmm. what determines whether that dog is going to have furious rabies or dumb rabies or it's there is um it's just determined by the animals yeah i think i think actually it's it's hard to say it can be both and it can also progress from one to the other so it's okay um it can display a mix of symptoms i i don't know if you can beforehand say which type it's gonna Okay. Uh, sure. So within within the period of time that the animal uh, is showing symptoms, it can be both have furious and dumb symptoms. It can show, um, yeah, a little bit of both in a way. Okay. It's also, um, for example, uh, dogs that show aggression, so the furious form, they can be disoriented as well and show some kind of paralysis and and uh, salivating. Mm-hmm. Okay. And for humans as well, so um, for other species and humans, um, they can display the same syst- uh, symptoms. Mm-hmm. Um, so humans have dumb and furious rabies as well. Yeah, so, so of course in humans it's, it's a bit different, um, just from, like, because from species to species and also for humans their general behavior is different, so also like, different symptoms are more obvious than others, but yeah. they can show the hydrophobia, they can show aggression, they can be disoriented. It's so scary. Yeah, it is really scary. scary. Yeah, and that's why it's so important to prevent the disease in animals so that it's not transmitted to humans, both for um, welfare of dogs, Mm -hmm. but also for people. Yeah. Yeah, so that was um, a bit about rabies itself. So, yeah, please let us know when there are more uh, questions about that. And then we wanted to talk a bit about what to do when you find a dog with rabies um, and what the protocols are. Um, Did you guys have any questions come through that yeah. were about the virus? Yeah, um, we have a uh, Jen <coughs> who asked: Is it possible to heal a dog that has rabies, or there is nothing, no medication? So once um, symptoms in a dog display and it's rabies, you cannot treat it anymore. It will not heal. Uh, but if a dog is bitten but it's vaccinated it will be prevented so if it's a pet you take it to the veterinarian a lot of times to get a booster of rabies um, but but if the vaccination coverage in stray dogs for example if it's high enough uh, which is that 70 percent of the dogs are vaccinated and the dog gets bitten uh, it will not die of it but once symptoms are there you're too late okay and yeah. does it work the opposite way too so if a dog that is vaccinated bites a dog that has rabies, the vaccination also protects them? I don't think so, no. Okay, so if a dog that is so, vaccinated... So uh, if a dog is vaccinated, it cannot get rabies, mm-hmm. so then the, the biting doesn't matter in, in a way. Okay. But if, a, if another dog that is bitten already has rabies and already displays symptoms, it is too late. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And uh, Mowgli asked, can it be transmitted from donkeys to dog as well? Um, theoretically, it can. But the, the chance that um, saliva of the donkey comes into the body of the dog by like aggressive biting or scratching or anything is very small. So in real life, it uh, doesn't happen. Okay. Yeah, you do need to be careful um, also when you have a donkey with rabies. If you, for example, have open wounds, um, like wear gloves or, or make sure you, you don't go into the mouth of, um, of a donkey or another animal with rabies. Okay, so having uh, we have a lot of uh, donkey donkeys are used 
uh, excessively in Morocco as a, as a mm. work animal. Um, so uh, it's important for our community to know too that there is uh, vaccinations available for donkeys mm -hmm. and rabies yeah. vaccinations available for yeah. horses, not just for dogs, cats and humans. Yeah, that's a really good point. Yeah. Yeah. It's a... Uh, uh, I'm not sure if that is uh, widely known, but uh, it's certainly available in our area from uh, local vets in Agadir um, uh, and even from uh, the local authority, I would imagine. Yeah. Yeah, good that you mentioned that. Yeah. Because a lot of people know that they need to uh, vaccinate their dogs and cats, which is um, in many countries uh, also required to do so. That's so that's so important that if you have a dog or a cat, take it to the vet every year too get the vaccine, mm -hmm. uh, but also if you have uh, livestock in yeah. to prevent them, uh, it's really important to get them vaccinated also to prevent like economic losses. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. So let me see. Uh, so somebody asked, um, can you test for rabies in an animal that is alive and how is it normally done? Um, so a lot of times when, uh, for example, in Morocco, when there is a dog that is suspected to have rabies, um, then according to legislation, you should isolate it for 10 days, if we discussed. Mm -hmm. And if it dies, um, it ideally should go to the laboratory for testing. And what they do is they test the brain of the dead animal. And that is the so-called golden standard. So that's, that's the way to go. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's in German. Well, we see. I think it's so far fine. Yeah. So, um, so far, it's not possible to test the live oh, animals. Yeah. There are some um, tests, for example, to test the saliva and some other methods. But the the way it no it's normally done is uh, to do a post mortem test. So in the in the body of the dead animal. And um, there is a there was some discussion uh, after Nina as well about. Uh, euthanizing an animal that has rabies and testing them after is mm -hmm. is uh, is there a reason like uh, medically why you can't does it affect the results at all if they euthanize so it's it's um, said sometimes that you need to wait till rabies progresses far enough so that the virus enters the brain but to my understanding you you don't need to wait that long mm -hmm. and I think it's always most important that animal welfare is uh, taken into consideration so also when you think it's rabies and the animal suffering it, it might be good to go to the vet and euthanize it mm -hmm. but then i can imagine that for example if at the laboratory they want to test for rabies but also test for poisoning mm -hmm. then it can be an issue okay so to have the most definitive answer the clearest answer that uh, whether it is rabies or not it's best uh, not to add any other um, ingredient into the mix <laughs> yeah kind of So uh, and also because it's official government legislation if you want them to do the testing mm -hmm. it's in terms of that best if you follow their guidelines okay thank you yeah but there's uh, there is quite some discussion about it and uh, for example in the Netherlands where I come from when there is a dog that is suspected of rabies and it's known to be uh, bitten by a rabbit dog then it's often used for testing Okay. So it's uh, it, it differs per country. And do you still have rabies in the Netherlands? No, we don't. So I think in uh, most parts of Europe we don't have it anymore. Uh, we used to have it in, in wildlife, in foxes uh, in Eastern Europe. But they uh, did mass uh, vaccination campaigns with oral drugs. Uh, oh, wow. And that way controlled it to a large extent. That's amazing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so that's really good. And in some countries it's still... Um, you have still rabies in bats, also, for example, in the USA and in Latin America. Mm -hmm. But that's, of course, quite uh, hard to control. Mm -hmm. Okay. So how, uh, what time is it now? How long do we have? Still? We have like 30 more minutes. Ooh. 35. Let me see. Yeah, so uh, I think something important to discuss is if... Um, you as a person get bitten by a rabbit dog or a dog where you think it has rabies, what should I do? Mm -hmm. um, well, you probably also know um, what the best way to go is. So what they recommend is first with soap and clean water for 15 minutes. 
Okay. And then contact um, the local doctor or um, institute based on if you are vaccinated or not, uh, what to do. You always need to go to the doctor to get a booster shot. And if you're not vaccinated, you also get uh, immunoglobulins. So you really need to do a series of uh, treatment okay. for multiple days. Yeah, and post-exposure vaccination. Um, so if, if you have a vaccination already before mm-hmm. you're bitten, yeah. uh, you're in a, a good position. Exactly. So um, it's important that people who work with, with dogs and animals in areas where there's rabies get a um, kind of start vaccination. It's two or three vaccinations. Mm-hmm. And then when you get bitten, you often only get one booster vaccination. Okay. So it's a lot easier. It's cheaper. Um, yeah. It's more openly accessible mm-hmm. in different areas. Yeah. So it's uh, so the best way to for go. For anyone watching um, that is in our um, in our proximity in our local community, if you love animals and if you are around mammals, which means dogs, cats, donkeys, horses, goats, um, it would be. Uh, it would be advisable for you to have a pre-exposure vaccination, um, which will put you in the best stead if, uh, if you are bitten by an animal that is rabid. Um, as we talked about before, there are two different types of uh, rabies and it's not always easy to tell um, just by looking at the animal. So uh, to keep you safe, um, there are vaccination, uh, there's a vaccination point available in Agadir opposite the French embassy and the vaccinations are free. Um, and, and Morocco Animal Aid, as an organisation, really recommend that um, people take their, uh, their own safety uh, in their own hands and they take responsibility for this virus by being vaccinated. Cool, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's good to share. And I see here a question by Mukli. Uh, before symptoms during the incubation uh, period occur, can we treat a dog or is it fatal uh, every time? So if a dog's get, dog gets bitten that is vaccinated, um, it's usually safe. Um, if it's your pet, you do take it to the vet for a booster vaccination. Uh, but if the dog is not vaccinated and it starts displaying symptoms, then it's too late. In between, like so from, say it takes four months of uh, incubation, um, once the animal is bitten, if they're bitten on Monday and they have a vaccination on Friday, mm-hmm. Does yeah, you should take them? it to the vet as soon as possible to do the vaccination in any case. Mm-hmm. Um, if it's bitten, and also same as with humans, clean the wounds thoroughly okay. with soap and water. Okay, okay. so yeah. if, even if they are bitten by a rabid animal, if they are vaccinated directly, mm-hmm. um, it could save them. Yeah, okay. yeah. That's good but know. once there are symptoms, it's too late. Okay. So um, that can take a bit in between. Okay. Were there any other questions, girls, that have come through? There is a question that Polly answered. It's um, if we wanted to come and volunteer at MIA, should we get a vaccine? Yes. Yeah, that's a really good question. I would say <laughs> yes, definitely, because you, there is a chance, like there is rabies in Morocco, there is a chance that you would get it, um, yeah. especially when working with dogs. So uh, make sure you get the vaccinations beforehand. And it's um, in most countries, three vaccinations. So make sure you start in time to be able to do all the shots. I think if you start a month beforehand, you should be good. Yeah. It's often day one, and then after a week you get a vaccination, and then after 28 days you get another one. Yeah, um, I'll just mention too that um, the animals in the shelter are all vaccinated against rabies, but... Um, I'm sorry. <laughs> that was Fanny's question. There are a lot of questions that you yeah. can answer. Um, but it was just a segue because I wanted to say that um, if you do come and volunteer, we, we often go out on rescues. Um, and at this point, we're de- we don't know what we're dealing with. So um, also when animals come to the shelter um, and they're in isolation before they enter the into the shelter that they're not vaccinated. So there is a, an area of risk and if and we're not willing to put... Um, the organisation uh, at risk by having people unvaccinated um, around the animals. So most definitely, if you want to come, get vaccinated. Yeah. And um, do the human need to have a booster every year as well? No, so um, you don't need to. Um, I talked to, um, so in some countries, I think they recommend if you go to an area where there's rabies to, to get a kind of booster shot um, to trigger your immune system. Okay. But I talked to a 
a medical doctor and researcher in the Netherlands who is uh, looking at exactly this. And uh, he says that the new guidelines are that you get your start shots, so as we discussed, but then get a booster only when you get exposed to a rabbit dog. Okay. So once you get bitten and you think a dog has or a cat has rabies, you uh, go to get your booster shot. Okay, so if I was to use myself in, as an example, I've had my three um, pre-exposure vaccinations mm -hmm. and, and last year I thought I was uh, bitten by a rabbit dog, so I went again mm -hmm. to have vaccinations. Yeah. In the future, I don't need to have yearly boosters, only if I think I'm bitten by a suspected rabbit animal do I need another vaccination. Exactly, that's, okay. uh, that's how um, the recommendation is according to this uh, research or medical doctor that I talked about. Mm -hmm. uh, but it is good to check your, um, your immune system levels. Okay. So sometimes if you had the start vaccinations a long time ago, mm -hmm. it might be good to boost it. Okay. I think it's uh, dependent on the area and the country how they uh, go about it. Mm -hmm. And are the type of vaccinations that they use in different countries different? Like, is the vaccinations that we use in Morocco the same as the vaccinations that they use in I India. think so, yeah. So the, sometimes the, the brands are slightly different, and uh, but often they work the same. Okay. Yeah. And um, another question um, that you can best answer, I think, is... Um, so we talked about vaccinations in the people that volunteer and in the dogs at the shelter. Uh, what about the, the animals in the area of IMSWAN and MAA? How, uh, like... What percentage do you estimate that is vaccinated against rabies? And uh, how, uh, which programs did you uh, have so far? Um, well, if I, I talk about, should I talk about IMSWAN? IMSWAN is the, the pilot project of, uh, of Nomad Dogs, which is the, um, the name of the TNVR project. The TNVR system that we want to implement in this area. Um, and IMSUAN, um, for a long time, we really pushed to have 70% uh, of the animals vaccinated, which would lead to a, a, a herd immunity. Is that how I would explain that mm -hmm. best? Yeah. Um, Caroline did mention it before, but if 70% uh, of the animals uh, are vaccinated, um, the, the percentage of, tr of transmission is uh, non-existent. No. Yeah, so, so they, um, uh, some years ago they discovered that once you vaccinate 70% of more of the dogs, there, is, there are not a lot of... So it's also, um, it, it works the same as uh, the discussions we had with Corona, that once a certain percentage of people would have had the disease, there are not, not enough people left kind of to uh, spread it to, so then the transmission stops. Okay, okay. Um, so for uh, so for IMSA one, this is a uh, all of the TNVR is a, an ongoing project, and it's not going to end overnight with uh, one one series of vaccinations. IMSA one, we are regularly sterilizing and vaccinating the animals there, and trying to keep the the population under control. And for Aurea, Tamarakt, and and Tagazut, uh, it's been uh, undulating. I would say as often as we can. Um, we send uh, the dogs and cats to the vets for sterilisation and vaccination and put them back out on the street. Um, and I would say we are putting out maybe 15 dogs a month at the moment. Great. Um, but uh, as we progress and uh, as we start to involve more of the community in uh, getting to know the dogs in their areas, um, then, yeah, we, we hope to do more. Yeah, I think that's really cool and it's... Um it's super important also because so we want to ideally eliminate rabies as a public health program so make sure it's not transmitted to people anymore mm -hmm. and for that the best way to go is doing vaccinations in um in animals in dogs in these areas because they're uh, the biggest yeah. uh, source of transmission to people yeah. and also for the dogs themselves yeah it's um and knowing too that we only have to we only have to make 70% of the population yeah. to reach the goal rather than a hundred percent on it because we will always miss yeah of course animals, yeah but uh you know our goal is only 70 percent and um it's it's doable right other countries yeah, are yeah and other countries have, have done it too so um even in morocco there are some 
really good examples of um, areas where they did control programs and vaccination and they have less rabies now. Uh, but also, for example, in Latin America, um, I think there are some countries that are really great examples of how you can control um, the disease. So in, um, in, in several countries, they did mass uh, vaccination campaigns about, uh, among dogs, and now they barely see any rabies among uh, people. And the rabies that is there comes from wildlife, comes from bats. So that, I think that proves that when you do the mass vaccination campaigns, uh, it, it really can make a difference. And also, for example, a big international organization called Mission Rabies, they organize a lot of mass vaccination campaigns in dogs. Um, in some countries in Africa, but also in India, for example, they have many campaigns and they already see the effects of that. So uh, it definitely is possible to uh, control it. Have there been any other methods of um, trying to eradicate rabies that have been successful apart from mass vaccination? Yeah, so if it's, um, if it's in countries where most rabies is, a, is among stray dogs, mm -hmm. then uh, mass vaccination campaigns are very effective. Um, of dogs and doing the vaccination to also control um, the population, mm -hmm. which I think here, what you did with Nomad Project, um, I think that's a really good way um, for rabies prevention and also to um, make sure the stray dog population doesn't get bigger. Yeah. Twenty more minutes. <laughs> Yeah, so, so a lot we um, discussed already. Maybe we can tell a little bit more about um, yeah, like the, the, the bigger picture. So one question was, how can we raise awareness on the dangers of neglected diseases such like rabies? I think that's a really nice question. And I think there it's really important to, first of all, talk about rabies with your friends and family. So educate the people around you. Um, especially when you live in an area where there is rabies around, uh, let people know what it is, how you can recognize it and what to do. And also, for example, in uh, quite some countries where you have rabies, there are great education programs. So it can be very simple going to primary schools and teach the children there about how to um, behave to what they can have and uh, what rabies is. And yeah, just uh, having a whole program. Yeah. Did you, um, are you considering uh, doing that as well here? Or are there pr programs here um, that do that already? Uh, I believe uh, Project Hyatt in uh, Tangier goes into um, schools and runs an education program. Great. Um, but in other parts of Morocco, I don't know. And we would absolutely love um, to do that. And it, yeah. it's, it's on our, it's part of our plan. Cool. Sure. Yeah. yeah. But um, I think as well, maybe importantly here, um, um, we've heard a lot of stories of people taking uh, rabid animals in their own hands and and uh, and killing them. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, hysteria is a it can be dangerous. So like like the education part of uh, this virus is is so important. And and that means saying to people and whether it's your own or of the animals around you is really mm -hmm. all that's needed to make sure that you don't get it. You don't yeah. you don't need to panic. Just get vaccinated. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's really good for people dog. to know. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I think their awareness and education is key. Yeah. That people know what to do. Mm -hmm. Indeed, not panic and uh, know where to go. I have a question mm -hmm. um, about why do one die of rabies? What happens in biological co context to the body? Can you repeat? <laughs> what happens? To the body biologically for when when you, when, when you have rabies so yeah. the um what basically happens is that the, the the virus answers the the nervous system so for example when you get bitten in your hand it answers the nervous system through there and crawls up all the way through your brains and everywhere where it goes it causes damage so for example um mobility. so it, the, the yeah so for example the mobility or the the paralysis issues and if it enters and uh, enters the brain it can cause the um, like change in behavior for example what you sometimes see and the aggression um so how do you die like the it does a connection it's like heart attack um you know you mean like physiologically how it dies? I actually yeah. don't know. I would need okay. to look that up. 
I think it's probably about um, different combination of different processes going on. Yeah. Yeah. So if um, if you have any questions, uh, just keep them coming. I think we answered most of the questions. We are here. We have here. Let me see. Yeah, so we talked a bit about the, the example programs and um, I would be curious um, maybe if people uh, in the chat uh, have live in an area where there's a very successful rabies campaign um, in dogs, maybe you can share it and we, uh, we can discuss. And you, Fanny, have another question. Anas, Anas is asking, is it real that cats and dogs usually tend to avoid being with other cats and dogs that have rabies already? Yeah. Yeah, that's um, so we talked about it already and I must say I, I've never really seen it, but I've I've heard several times that when a dog with rabies, for example, enters a pack of dogs and it behaves strangely, that the other dogs would defend themselves and pu push them away. Mm -hmm. Have you uh, had experience with this? Yeah, I think um, uh, they don't they don't want uh uh, a sick animal in their in their pack, and uh, I mean, depending on the type of rabies, it, rabies it is, it, um, and a uh, furious rabies, they're chasing the dogs. But say mm -hmm. a, a dumb rabies, um, oh, I've lost my train. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so so furious rabies, it might be they are a bit more logical. Dog. Yeah, because yeah. A, a dog uh, shows aggressive. <laughs> behavior towards other dogs so they will defend themselves and chase it away yeah um but right. also with the dumb rabies they have a sick animal around and they um and we found them alone all the time yeah we anyway. find them alone yeah. yeah they are not so uh, part of anything yeah. yeah but with i think even just to broaden that like with with any type of sick animal we see animals left by their um by their pack mm -hmm regardless of the type of sickness that they have we see them uh, ostracized we see them alone we see them isolated yeah. um, and uh, I think it's instinctive for the animals to push out um, what they don't understand what they don't know mm -hmm. and what uh, you know they, they want to protect their, what is there yeah um, so even even aside from rabies we we see sick animals get pushed out yeah okay I have one question mm -hmm. um, is there a is there a limit of age? Not a limit, but like a puppy can have rabies. Yeah, uh, principally every age can uh, of dogs can they can have rabies. Okay. Yeah. So also, um, somebody asked, can like can some dogs have it and not others? For example, pets or uh, stray dogs. So theoretically, every dog that is not vaccinated can get it. Um, but if a dog is in a, a group of other dogs or roaming freely. Or maybe it's um, attached at a house, but other dogs are roaming around freely. Then it's more um, there's a bigger chance that it would uh, get it. Okay. But Here theoretically, we, uh, everyone can get it. We start our vaccination for rabies at three months. Yeah. What's yeah, the I think that's the standard. And it's a standard because of uh, antibodies in the system, or because the, yeah. the vaccination is too strong, or uh, because uh, a two-month-old puppy. Yeah, so it's it's a it's a, a bit of a combination. So a puppy needs to be a certain age for it to be able to build up the immune system as reaction on the um, vaccine, mm -hmm. and it needs to be strong enough. And you also always look at the when the the risk starts. Okay. So for for the dogs on the street that, that are born on the street and they live on the street, mm -hmm. uh, a one month, two month old puppy is at risk of um, contra contracting rabies. So I would need to look into how it is with rabies, but I know with some diseases and some vaccines, if you um, vaccinate the mother through the milk, it will um, make sure the puppies are protected as well. Okay. So I will. Uh, I, I need to look up if it's the same same for rabies as well. But often through the immune system of the mother through the milk, the puppies are protected. Okay. So once they're taken off the milk, the vaccinations. Uh, and their natural like own immunity is important. Okay, um, and just to say too that uh, there are a lot of questions coming through that um, perhaps we won't be able to answer today, um, and we plan on providing the answers to those questions later 
um, in uh, some other videos uh, or documents that um, we will put on YouTube. Uh, we also plan to women and uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, So yeah, we, we really wanted to, to make this uh, conversation accessible to everybody. So if you're watching and there are things that you don't understand, we hope that you can catch up on the information um, in French or Arabic or Shilha or German um, at another, another time. Yeah, and also if you have questions that were not answered or you don't understand some parts of it, I would say don't hesitate to um, ask us and we uh, will try to answer them later. Yeah, and we can still make another live or um, go further in the topic and deeper. Yeah. yeah, cool. Yeah, so I think this is about it for now. Um, and so, um, yeah, we will look into uh, how to protect the animals here. So maybe if you come from an area where there is a good vaccination program and you want to share experiences, please uh, let us know. Um, we don't have uh, rabies in Australia nope. either. <laughs> <laughs> it um, has never been there actually. Hasn't it? No, I don't think so. <laughs> Some uh, countries it has never been. Oh. Well, <laughs> what do you know? <laughs> um, well, they still vaccinate against rabies in Australia, even though it doesn't exist. We have. Uh... Yeah, so in some countries, also where it doesn't exist, you do vaccinate for animals that are imported, for example, or if you take your animal abroad to an area where it is okay. present. Okay, that's good to know. Yeah. It's true that I think Australia has the most um, strict rules of importation yeah, when it comes to animals. Yeah. I think there is a lot of quarantine, they are yeah. very cautious. Maybe, yeah. it's, maybe that's why, because they don't have rabies. Yeah, I think it's, it's because it's a, an island, but also because it's um, like in, in also like only with animal diseases. It's um, yeah, I, I don't think it's a lot different. Also, for example, you know, probably with like uh, importing vegetables and plants and everything, everything is really regulated. And it's also, of course, easier when you live on an island compared to where you live in an area where there's constant transport by car and, and trucks. Yeah. We're lucky. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So thanks a lot for joining, guys. And uh, thank you, Caroline. Maybe there will be a next one. Thank you, Caroline. <laughs> yeah, thank you thank so beaucoup. much for coming. Welcome. Yeah. Thank you, everybody that um, got online and and saved the time and the date to be a part of this session today. Um, we hope we covered everything. And uh, like we said, if there was anything else that you want to know, get in touch. Um, we plan to put all this uh, put all this out again in uh, ways that are uh, accessible to everybody, um, and um, as well to say thank you for everybody that uh, stuck around after Anina. Um, it was a it was a really hard decision for us to make, um, and uh, uh, we suffered with her, um, and we we were happy that when she passed away that her suffering was over. So Merci. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Ciao. Bye. Cheers. Okay, so now is a tricky point. Save the life. <laughs> hey, Coco. Hey.